Hey everybody, so I've been getting a lot of questions about what an income portfolio might look like since I posted the video about building a simple diversified income portfolio. So I decided I would do an example to show all those people so they could kind of see what one looks like and they could go from there. Uh, for our example here, I, I started with $60,000 just because it was a nice round number that let me get nice even numbers for the individual holdings. Uh, so first we'll go over each holding, what the dividend is, then we'll go over the portfolio as a whole, the diversi diversification, who it might work for, stuff like that. Uh, so again, we started with $60,000 and we'll go from our largest holdings down to our smallest one. Uh, for our biggest one is going to be our di dividend equity ETF. In our case, it's going to be the Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. Uh, for this, I used about $24,000, which makes up almost half of the portfolio. Uh, I chose this one because I think SCHD is probably one of the better dividend ETFs out there. And for most people, you're going to want the bulk of your money to be in an ETF just because it's going to make things easier for you. Uh, from there, our next two largest are going to be RYLD, which is our covered call ETF. In this case, it accounts for about six thousand dollars of our ETF, or about one, or excuse me, ten percent. Uh, I went with this one because it's a very high yield. It's relatively safe for the current market, but again, if you if you look at the covered call ETF video, you can see the dangers with it. Uh, this is really just an income vehicle. There's no, not much appreciation here, so just be aware of that. Uh, our next largest holding is going to be our bond holding, which in our case is going to be ISTB, which is a one to five year US bond diversified fund. It's going to be government, uh, investment grade, and high yield short term bonds. I chose short term bonds for this just because of the current market with extremely low interest rates and interest rates likely to go up. Shorter term bonds are going to have less interest rate risk. Uh, that's only going to yield about 2%. So for a lot of people, that's that might be a little bit too low. But for, for this case, I liked it just because of the little bit of safety it provides. After that, we have WFHY, which is a high yield corporate bond ETF. For this, I went with a little bit less, only about 3,000 or 5% of our portfolio, which is kind of to balance out our short term bond fund so that our fixed income funds kind of do a little bit more than just 2%. In this case, we're probably going to look at about 2.2, 2.3 if we put the two together. Uh, so our bond funds, all, or, excuse me, our funds, bond and equity and covered call are going to make up about two thirds of our fund here, or of our portfolio here, about 40000 of our $60,000. Uh, I would recommend for a lot of people, especially if you don't know what you're doing, for that percentage to be a lot higher, maybe 80 to 90%. But if you know what you're doing when you're picking your holdings, 50 to 60% in ETFs is probably fine for you. After that, we go into our individual equities. And again, I'll go from largest to smallest. Uh, our largest in this case is NOP, which is not offshore partners, which I've done a video on. Very high yield between 10 and 12% usually. Again, not a lot of capital appreciation, but it's going to get you that nice yield and is going to push your portfolio yield up very nicely. After that, we go to Verizon, which I've also done a video on. This is more of a defensive pick. Verizon's, you're going to get a little bit of that capital appreciation. It's a very large blue chip company, so there's a lot of safety there, even in a market downturn. And it still yields a good 4.5%, which isn't bad at all. After that, we have SPTN, or Spartan Nash, which is, again, another defensive pick. A grocer slash wholesaler, again, going to, going to still exist during a market downturn and still provides a nice little 4 4.5% dividend yield. After that, we look at IP, which is International Paper. Again, very large, not a blue chip company, but a very large company in the S&P 500. Uh, again, in a market downturn, they're still going to exist, still pays a nice 3 to 4% dividend yield, keeps our yield on our portfolio pretty high. After that, we go down to ARCC, which is Aries Capital, which is a business development corporation. Uh, Again, very high yield here, looking at about 9%, very little capital appreciation. This is an income vehicle, again, just forcing up the yield of our portfolio. And our last holding is going to be GLPI, which is Gaming and Leisure Properties, which is a real estate investment trust. Again, a very nice yield of 5 to 6%. 
in this case slightly more capital appreciation but still it's mostly an income vehicle uh, just remember these are all placeholders you, you don't have to use any of these these are just holding the place of you know a dividend fund a bond fund so on and so forth uh, when you're building an income portfolio, I would say that you want to shoot for between 5 and 6% yield. Uh, in our case, our yield on cost here is 5%. That means on our cost basis, our yield is just over 5%. Uh, once you start getting below 5%, down towards 4 or even 3%, you're really not in an income portfolio unless you have a ton of money, millions and millions. You're really looking at dividend growth at that point. So try to keep it between five and 6% and you'll be able to get a little bit of income out of it. As we can see here on our 60,000, we're making just under 3K a year, not too bad. Now, if we actually go over and look at our, our portfolio, excuse me, we can look at our diversification. Uh, as we can see here, SEHD holding the biggest spot at about what 45 percent 45 percent and then all of our others less than that but as you can see we have only 10 holdings here and we still have a lot of diversification we have uh, financials we have a REIT we have consumer cyclical we have communications we have defensive stock uh, stocks we have non-traditional equity which is our covered call ETF and we have our fixed income or bonds so once again, we've only got 10 holdings here, but we're still widely diversified. We have all of our all of our industries, all of our sectors covered. We have a good mix of bonds to equities. Everything's looking pretty good for an income portfolio. So the question becomes, is this kind of income portfolio good for you? Um, I would say that if I was presented with a similar portfolio, anyone between the ages of 20 and 40 maybe 20 and 50 this would be good for you if you're looking for income you're gonna get a little bit of growth out of this but you're also gonna get that nice five to six percent yield uh, if you're a little bit older than that say if you're in retirement or nearing retirement this is gonna look a lot different you're probably gonna have a lot more bond holdings you're probably not gonna have as much in your uh, covered call or as much in maybe your BDC possibly your REIT you're probably gonna be a lot more into Verizon-like companies, in international paper-like companies, and your SCHD and uh, bond ETFs. So again, just a little quick overview of what a bond, excuse me, an income portfolio might look like. Uh, if you want to see any more portfolios, if you have any ideas for maybe uh, a target yield on cost, if you want to see what, what a certain kind of person should look for, tell me in the comments and I could make one just for that. Otherwise, I hope this helps and thanks for watching.